Okay. Hey, um, next part of our acceleration unit is we're going to go over another acceleration formula. Now, hey, what we're gonna what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you the formula right away because um, that's what you're gonna need for the uh, worksheet today. Um, I'll talk about how we got to that formula, so it's not just you know math magic, but the very important thing you need to know is right here, right away here. All right. And that is this one over here on the right. All right. So time independent relationship between the change in X, that's the distance. V, that's the velocity. And A, that's the acceleration. Okay. So if we know the distance an object is traveling, it's starting and, and final velocities, we're going to be able to figure out the acceleration or some order of those things. So the formula that you should you should write down, they're going to be using all today is this one over here on the right. That is your final velocity squared is going to equal your initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times the change in your distance. Okay, so we have that delta x. That's its change in position. And so for almost all of our equations, it'll just be what distance did the thing travel? Okay, how do we get there? Oh boy, let's go back. Yeah, yeah, we're going to look at some of these things, okay? Um, so, uh, free fall is a different day. Um, so, when we look at these things, all right, without time, that, that's the biggest thing we're looking at today is how do you solve it when we have no idea what time is? Um, and so, this is how you do that. So, to derive the equation, none of these things are new, but I'm just going to show you how we get to that step. Um, your average velocity is your change in distance over change in time. You know that if you travel 60 miles in one hour, you are traveling at 60 miles an hour. Okay. Another way to express your velocity is whatever your starting speed was, your final speed and divide it by two. So if I'm accelerating and I'm going to go from zero to 60 in 10 seconds, well, hey, my average velocity through that would be 60 divided by 10 or 6 in there. I'm sorry, not 60 divided by 10. It would be six, 60 divided by 2 or 30 miles an hour, all right, as an average velocity. So we can substitute those things in to our acceleration formula here, all right? So we know acceleration is the change in velocity over change in time. We can rearrange it. We can expand it. And then we can use that um, displacement deal we just talked about and plug that in. All right. Now, that's a ton of math there. All right. Uh, if you don't want to follow along that train of thought, that's OK. All right. I'm just showing you how physics gets there. Um, because I want to kind of get rid of some of that mysticism of, oh man, it's, it's you know, math magic here. Uh, it is still magic, but there is a very concrete way that we're able to derive this equation here. So we, we plug those things in. We're going to end up doing some factoring here and combining terms. And eventually we get our change in distance is going to be Final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared all over two times the acceleration. Well, that's a really inconvenient way for us to handle or use the equation. So we're going to use this equation over here on the right. So final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2a times the distance. Okay, so for everything, I just double check, for everything on worksheet number three today, you're going to be using this formula here. Um, my advice to you is once again, write down what you know. Okay. Write down what the final velocity is, the initial velocity. Remember if it's like, if it's starting from rest, that means the initial velocity is zero. If it's coming to a complete stop, the final velocity is zero. Uh, and then for sure, remember your orders of operation. All right. So if you have two AD, that is on this side of the plus sign. So you're going to have to kind of work, work your way over there and solve for these things first before you just combine terms or take a square root out of anything. Okay. So a challenging one today, use this formula for the whole um, deal. It'll also be in the notes on the, the assignment. Um, good luck. We'll have an answer key and a walkthrough tomorrow. Oh, still in here.